Okay guys, in this video segment we're going to talk about uh, using the periodic table to map out our electron configurations and then actually building those configurations themselves. So first thing we want to do is get out of the periodic table. Alright, so uh, as we identify these key areas of the table, we have our S block which is right here, we have our D block which is all this here, our P block which is here, and helium actually belongs with the S block, and finally our F block down here. Okay. So as you use a periodic table, it's going to guide you in terms of filling out your electron configuration, or it's going to identify where all the electrons are located that uh, you have on an atom. Now, notice how we have numbers 1 through 7 down here. Those indicate your energy level. One of the tricks is that once you are filling these different electrons into their orbitals, um, that there is some overlap, and that overlap can be accounted for by the periodic table. So the one thing you have to do is in the D block, what we do is we say that the D block is always 1 minus the energy level you're on. So in this case, it's 3D and then 4D and then 5D and then 6D. The F block is 2 minus the energy level it goes on. So since we're in the 6 energy level and then the F block would insert here, it would be 4F and then 5F. Okay. So the way this works is if you're trying to fill out a particular element, let's say we want to fill out um, whatever one is here, boron. Okay, So boron would have one, two electrons in the 1s, it have two electrons in the 2s, and it have one electron in the 2p. Okay, So a periodic table can really guide us as we kind of work our way down, and it actually patterns everything out for us. It accounts for the overlapping, it accounts for that. Okay, So let's go through this and actually build some now. Now, when we actually use the periodic table to guide us, uh, we've got to remember to follow our three rules, and then we want to just practice it a bunch, okay? So here's your notation that we have. When you're working with electron configurations, uh, there's three different things you write down. The first thing you write down is a numerical value that is the, the level or the energy level. So we always start with the first energy level. So for hydrogen, its electrons are going to go on the one or the first energy level, okay? The next thing you write down is the orbital type. So is it an S, a P, a D, or an F? And then finally, how many electrons do you put in there? Okay. Remember, S can have 2, P can have up to 6, D can have up to 10, and F can have up to 14. Okay. So let's go through and let's actually do aluminum together. All right. So let's go to the board. So we have aluminum. And if you look at the periodic table, aluminum sits... Pull out my trusty periodic table here. So aluminum sits right there, which means we're going to fill the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, the 3s, and put one electron in the 3p. That's what our plan is going to be here. So let's map it out. Okay. So we get in the first energy level, S-shaped orbital, two electrons. Now aluminum had 13 electrons to start, so now I'm down to 11. And then in the second energy level, in an S-shaped orbital, I can put two more electrons. Okay, So that again mimics the first row, the two boxes, that represents this. The second row, the two boxes, represents this. And then now we go across to here, so now we're in the P block. So I'm going to be in the second row, so it would be a 2P. And I can put up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons in there. Okay, so I had 11, took two more away. I have nine, took six away. So now I'm down to three electrons. Okay, and I've gone here, here, and I'm over here. So on the third energy level now, in the S block, I can put two of those electrons, which now means I have one left. So I go across, and in my P block, on the third energy level, I have one electron left for aluminum. So the third energy level, P block, one electron left. Okay? So that would be the electron configuration. Now what this does for us, it maps out the location of every single electron in the atom. Okay? Very similar to drawing, you know, 2, 8, 8, 18, 32 on the planetary model. But since we can't draw the quantum model, instead we just map it out numerically as a, as a map for us. Okay? Let's do another one. So what we're going to do is a little bit harder. Uh, we're going to do, let's do uh, 
titanium, okay? Titanium is TI, it's number 22 on the periodic table, so you can find that on the table, and let's kind of work our way through it. So titanium has 22 electrons in it that we'll be working with. So I know I can put, in the first energy level, I can put two electrons in that S orbital. On the second energy level, I can put two electrons in that orbital, so that's two and two, so now I'm down to 18 electrons after these four are gone. And then on the second energy level, in a P-shaped orbital, I can now put six electrons. So that it gets me through here. And I'm down to 12 electrons. And then on the third energy level, I can take two more electrons in an S-shaped orbital. And in the same third energy level, I can put six electrons in a P-orbital. Notice how it pretty much mimics aluminum to start. But aluminum ran out of electrons here, where titanium has more electrons to work with. Okay, so I've taken another two plus six, so I'm down to four electrons left at this point for my titanium. Okay, so I've gone 3s, 3p, now I'm at 4s. So on the fourth energy level, in an S shaped orbital, I'll do two electrons. That leaves me with two. And then I move over here. Remember, Ds are always 1 minus, okay? So if I'm in the 4S, the next thing I need to fill is the 3D, okay? So this is a 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D, okay? So since I'm 1, 2 in, I get 2 electrons in the 3D. And then I'm done, okay? Also on this slide right here, um, here are five of them that you could do. What I'll do is actually I, I will pause the video here. Uh, or have you pause the video, I should say, and then you can practice these, and then I'll give you the answers for these so that way you can actually see what the answer should be. So go ahead and pause it now, work on these five, and then um, when you're ready, hit play again, and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, so here we go. We're going to hit play, and we're going to move to our answers. And if we go through these, this is what you should have gotten for these five. Okay, so check them out. If you did not get them right, go back through and see where your mistake was at, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, that ends this video. The next video, we talk about exceptions and ions. Thank you.